I, I know everyone's been talking about really deep, meaningful stuff. So let's talk about something very shallow. Me! <laughs> Hi! <laughs> Hi, I just thought I'd introduce myself. Uh, see, so like, um, I'm the head of strategy at a communications agency. Uh, I'm a published author. I'm a skater, I'm a swimmer, I'm a cyclist, I'm a skier, I'm a wakeboarder. I'm also a serial party boy, but don't tell everyone. I live in a pretty nice house. It's been featured in magazines all over the world. I pr drive a pretty nice car. I'm a pretty good home chef and I'm an occasional advertising model. <laughs> Uh, so, my big question after that incredibly wanky introduction, am I a man? Well, thank you for that resounding nothing, but <laughs> usually people would say yes, thank you very much. Now let me tell you something else. I collect Barbie dolls, like lots of Barbie dolls, like 12,000 Barbie dolls. I've got 12,000 Barbie dolls in my little Singaporean house. Um, in fact, it's the largest collection in Asia. It's in the Asia Book of Records. So now my next question then is, am I still a man? Thank you, so there's no point to this anymore, Kibai. <laughs> now I'm just gonna to talk to you a little bit about Barbie. Barbie tells us that you can be anything and that's been her tagline for a while. She herself has had like 200 careers and she's been around since like 1959. Uh, and when I was a kid, uh, <laughs> I'm, so I'm sorry, but when I was a kid, I wanted to be a fireman. Um, not so much a fireman, but all the traits that were associated with firemanism, which is like courageous and brave and strong and handsome. And then I started playing with dolls. And, you know, even, even as a five, six year old, I did ask myself, what kind of man would I then grow up to be? Um, so I'm gonna tell you a, a bit more about my story. My brush with media um, started at a pretty young age. At the age of 17, I was a teen journalist. And that was when my collection of $250, by the way, went public and everyone was like, oh, okay, so he collects dolls, oh my god. Um, and now when you Google my name uh, with, with the word Barbie as a suffix or a prefix, you actually get things like this. Like, it's, it's an insane amount of media coverage globally. Uh, I believe there are about 300,000 hits. So, um, and it happens, like, I've been, I've, been, I've been compared to Smithers, which is fun. Um, <laughs> um, but you know, with, with internet fame, as Christabel will probably tell you, comes things like this. And imagine this, right? You, you just like one day wake up and there's some media, media coverage about you. And the next day on Yahoo, you're being called a faggot. You're being called a homo. You're being called a crazy rich Asian. And that's used as an insult, by the way. Um, single. Uh, uh, yeah, I wish. Um, <laughs> it's... It became so talkable that, that even, even a magazine in Singapore published this and said the Straits Times finally posted about the Singaporean guy who collects Barbies and all the sexist homophobes have crawled out of their holes. Which, which is awful. I mean, like, you don't, you don't think about these things because to me it's a private collection. It's just stuff I do in my free time. And it suddenly opened up a floodgate of, of I guess, opinions? Opinions which may not necessarily be in your favour. So that really got me thinking about the not-so-wonderful world of internet fame. Uh, I myself am a relatively confident guy, but sometimes I think about my own loved ones. Um, these are my parents, lovely, lovely parents, bless them. They, uh, they've never said anything disparaging about my collection. They've always supported my collection. And then one day, right, because I'm, I'm in this ad campaign, so like, Right now, if you take the MRT, you will see me on the, on the, on the train, on the platform screen doors and whatnot. Uh, and, and my parents were, were in church one day, and um, someone, someone asked them, is that your son, uh, the doll guy on the ads? And they were like, yeah, 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 that's my son. And, and this person was like, and you're okay with it? And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> and I could actually see that flicker of shame in my parents' eyes. Parents who, who never thought that this was a weird thing. And there was this flicker of shame. They picked themselves up, um, but you, you, you feel it. And suddenly you worry and you, you start thinking about the larger implications of my own stupid collection. 
I used to defend myself because you know when you go to school and they're bullies or all that kind of stuff, you, you defend yourself. It's like, this is my decision. I am still a man. But now I understand that my responsibility is so much bigger. Can you imagine, right, that first of all, I have to defend my choices, but I've also got to defend my upbringing, my parents, my grandparents, my family. Uh, I have to defend my partner who has to live in a ridiculous house full of dolls with me. I have to defend my friends because my best friend has to be permanently associated with this guy that collects dolls and brings dolls out in public and photographs them. Um, it is rather embarrassing, I must admit. Uh, I have to defend my loved ones. So. To me, right, that, that suddenly became a, a thing where I have to think about me being the cause of someone's shame to becoming their protector. So I, I think that that was a lesson in manhood for me where, where Barbie made me into a protector, whether I liked it or not. Um, I started Instagramming, as, as one does, and I've got a healthy-ish following, and through Instagram, I... I I met some amazing, um, but I think it also managed to help me or help other people reach out to me. So I've, I've been helping Make-A-Wish uh, globally for, for years and using Barbie to spread the message of happiness and hope. So I've sent like 13 dolls to, to Brazil uh, to, because this, this girl had a, had a wish um, to have dolls from all over the world. Um, closer to home, this is Vivian. Vivian has muscular dystrophy uh, and her whole body does not move. But she loves, she loves Barbie. So uh, what I do with my Instagram page is that I go to her house and I dress dolls for her and then we do like little fashion shows and we put them on my Instagram and she feels like people are watching, which is, which is great. Um, yeah, so this is, this is Vivian's not so humble collection. <laughs> She's got a pretty decent collection actually. Um, I live up a, a, a long flight of staircase and she, and she wanted to see uh, my house, uh, which has 12,000 dolls in it. So we, we physically had to carry her into the house. Um, but, you know, that, that moment where, where her eyes lit up to see something that she never thought she would see, that was magical for me. And I, I, I'm not someone that cries, uh, but it did bring a tear to my eye. So lesson number two, I guess, from, from Barbieism is that, is that I actually went from being very passive to being a bit more compassionate. I don't want to say I'm really compassionate, but I've gone to becoming a little bit more compassionate and understanding of the world. Last point, I promise. I'm going to talk about Sri Lanka. Now, I used to travel a lot pre-COVID for, for business and for, for, for leisure. And I was once on an agency transformation trip in Sri Lanka where I had to go in and do coaching for like two weeks. And I was stuck in this hotel, at, at, and at 7 p.m. there was nothing else, no bars, no clubs, and I would eat my cheeseburger and go to sleep. Uh, I usually have a travel doll with me, and I use hotel toilet paper <laughs> to make a dress for my travel doll. And it kind of looked like this. <laughs> and then I Instagrammed it, and my, my, my followers, my fans were like, oh my god, this is so cool. And I'm like, you know what, I'm stuck here for 14 days. I'm going to be doing this every night for the next 14 days just to amuse my audience. And from there, right, I started making things like this out of hotel toilet paper. Toilet paper is like 75 cents. I refuse to pay for this. So, and, and as you can see, the designs became a, a lot more uh, elaborate, uh, inspired by Sri Lanka, inspired by the weddings I saw in the lobby of, of Mount Lavinia Hotel, and bandage dresses, that kind of stuff. I even used the, the cup cover in the hotel room to make a hat. That, that legit is how bored I was. Uh, <laughs> And, and little did I know that in the 14 days when, when I was away, um, a, a Singaporean magazine, Nylon, covered, covered it and, and talked about how I made doll dresses out of toilet paper. And before you know it, before at the time, talked about my toilet paper dresses for dolls. And then before you know it, it was in Vogue, Italy. And I'm like, wait, what? I'm like, I'm like this, is, this is my toilet paper. <laughs> And, and it's in Vogue magazine, which is like insane for me. Um, which then gave me the courage to publish a book. So besides my day job, I can actually now say that I'm a published author with a book on Amazon and book depository. Um, just so you know, I launched the book back in Sri Lanka, in Mount Lavinia Hotel. And, and like, that was kind of one of the highlights of my life. Uh, which then led to me having my own exhibition at Mint Museum in, in Singapore where I also lo locally launched the book, 
which then got me invited to be one of the, the guest artists at Barbie's 60th birthday celebrations in conjunction with the Singapore tour. And oh, by the way, and what, what I did there was that I tried to make dresses out of Singaporean icons instead. So I used the good morning towel to make a gown. I used Singapore plastic bags, the, the ones we get in the market to make a gown. And uh, my favorite, the char siu rice wrapper. Uh, <laughs> char siu rice is like my favorite food. It's even got the rubber band and the chopsticks that come with the, with, come with the food. Um, and that got me into Bazaar magazine. And I'm like, I'm like, wait, what? What's what's going on? This is this is dolls, yo. Um, and and what happens then is that because of my use of upcycled, recycled, sustainable materials, I'm actually now also an official spokesperson for one of the biggest pulp and paper companies in the world to talk about sustainability in in fashion. Uh, and I continue to do work with them uh, by creating dresses out of their tissue paper to talk about sustainability. Uh, yeah, like I said, when I began this, it does sound shallow. Me standing up here talking about myself is one of the most uncomfortable things I've ever had to do. Um, and you know, to a lot of people, it may sound like success, but I define success a little bit differently because success to me, right, is the ability to feel completely in control of your own life. Um, because you're going to have to have that job, you're going to have to have your family and, and all that. But being able to control your whole life um, to me, that, that's something that's precious. It's something that not a lot of us dare about that. I, I just want to say, like, imagine if I hadn't been that weirdo who brought a doll on a business trip. None of this, none of this, this avalanche of, of stuff would have happened if I wasn't weird. So can you imagine something like that has managed to shift the whole conversation? And these are words that I didn't make up. These are words that were hurled at me on the internet from weird to gay as an insult. Again, that just makes no sense. But weird, gay, hoarder, poorly brought up, crazy rich Asian, loser. And I've somehow managed to shift that whole conversation into one of craftsmanship, into talent, into design, into skill. Um, and that's really you taking control of your own narrative uh, as soon as your name goes out in public. Um, and I, I have to thank Passion for that, which was point number three. This whole session has been about the meaning of you, and to, to be very honest, I'm 41, and I'm still on a journey to becoming a man. It's, it's not easy. We, we learn every day. Um, and Barbie has been my unlikely companion, uh, but she's also given me some pertinent lessons. Uh, as, I, as I mentioned, I've managed to prioritize protection of my loved ones in my whole life. I've, she's given me some kind of compassion, and I, I say this as an advertising person, we very seldom have compassion. So <laughs> being able to open my eyes to, to people that need stuff, it, it's, it's huge for me. And um, Barbie has also allowed me to live with passion. My concluding thought is just know that it's okay to be different because you never know what's going to spiral from there. Um, playing with Barbie could have proven to reduce my manhood, if you think about it very logically. But Barbie has actually made me into more of a man than I ever dreamt possible. Thank you.